Okay, well, welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're having a great uh, Discover. Welcome to Las Vegas and Discover 23. Um, let me introduce myself before we get going. So I'm Craig Partridge. I'm the senior director globally of our advisory approach to customers. So how we engage customers in outcome-driven conversations before we engage them in kind of where the products and the services and the solutions might, might be able to help accelerate those outcomes. I'm based in the UK, uh, but this is my 23rd Discover. So I get a chance to speak to lots of customers from all over the world. And a little session here for 20 minutes on understanding why the cloud experience is unique, but maybe your path to get there isn't. Because what we've done over the last, I don't know, five years or so as a group is been traveling across customers, across industries, across the world, about 400 or so customers that we've spoken to. And we try to gather a, an understanding as to whether or not there's a, an underlying framework or a, a repeatable pattern of behavior as customers pivot towards more kind of digital outcomes, cloud-enabled outcomes. And it's certainly true that I think HPE's kind of core belief around what's happening inside our customer accounts is, is true. Uh, there was a lot of activity happening at the edge around data, or yes, around cloud um, uh, outcomes, and of course, across uh, security. And increasingly, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm seeing now in almost every annual report that I pick apart, decision-making criteria now set very firmly around our sustainable and sustainability outcomes as well. In fact, for many customers now, I think that's a, a procurement criteria in terms of how they move forward. So I think HPE's kind of called it right in terms of the big core pillars of what's happening. But the journey that I started to go on was to say, good, but how does this relate to our customers? So instead of HPE out language, what would that translate to in terms of what our customers are trying to drive for? And it turns out that um, although all of our customers are attempting to unlock the value of these key pillars, they're all approaching it in a slightly unique way. In fact, if I, I think if I asked everybody here, what do, you, what do we mean by the word edge? I suspect I'd get multiple different answers from everybody in the room. Maybe even that would be true around cloud data and security as well. So what we decided to do was to see if we could take all of those conversations across industry and across the geos and be able to construct a repeatable framework that we could then go and test in the way that we engage customers in these discussions. And it turns out that the cloud experience is unique, uh, not because cloud necessarily as a technology is unique, but because your edge is unique. And when we look at the edge, the way the customers are telling us they're going after that agenda is, is really around two core themes, what we call edge agendas. And the two core themes where they're investing uh, significant dollars is one around the experience that they're trying to drive. So how do they connect to people and how do they use technology to better engage and connect with people? So it's a very persona-driven agenda and it's an experience-driven agenda. That's very different to using technology not necessarily to engage people, but to connect to things. And so we term that the digitization agenda at the edge. In that agenda, you'll see initiatives around things like Industry 4.0, certainly IoT, digital twinning technologies. This is where we're trying to instrument the physical world in order to understand how we could exert some control or influence back into that physical edge. And it turns out that for our customers, both of those agendas are typically being driven by different personas inside their organization. The chief sales officer, chief marketing officer, chief digital officer might be more focused on the experience because that's where we transact digitally at the edge. Whereas maybe someone head of manufacturing is looking to drive efficiencies in their operational technology, they might be more interested in driving the digitization agenda. We do this, of course, across the globe. There's a great example um, that you can come and talk to us about on the floor, using some of our Uber technology to drive great experiences. And what I like about the Disney example is it's a proof point that when you couple those two agendas together, both the experience that you're trying to drive through technology, coupled together with an understanding of the physical world in which you deliver that experience, you can create really differentiated outcomes. What is also clear is that our customers are, in order to be able to exert or extract the value at the edge, 
clearly cloud service delivery models, cloud architectures, cloud service delivery platforms have become the key enabler to be able to build innovation at speed and at scale to be able to deliver those outcomes back to the edge. And so cloud has become the key enabler of being able to deliver value back to the edge. And again, we saw two really distinct agendas when it comes to talking to customers about cloud. The first agenda, much more driven by IT, maybe the one we're most familiar with, would be the constant modernization and renovation of the core platform agenda. So in other words, where do I place workloads? Where do I place data? Is that on-prem? Is it off-prem? Is it the edge? And how does that hybrid cloud landscape form itself? Typically, this is an agenda driven by IT. And typically, it's around agility and cost optimization conversations with customers. But I have to tell you now that that is not only happening inside core data centers. Increasingly, we're seeing that platform agenda play out at the edge as well. Increasingly, customers are deploying that compute at the edge. So as they increase on the digitization agenda, they can actually move uh, actions and controls at the edge based on the data remaining at the edge. And of course, they need some compute engine to be able to drive the inference there. It's not the only agenda in cloud. In fact, although IT might think it owns the cloud agenda, what we found in core talking to customers is the other major engine or actors inside that cloud enabled outcome is the engineering teams, the software development teams, the data scientists, those looking to use data, cloud scale architectures to develop new digital products and services that they can then push back out to the edge, either as an experience to drive revenue and productivity or in order to be able to drive control and insights at the edge. And so those software development teams and engineering teams have become significantly important in the conversation about how customers are navigating their journey to the cloud. But both of these cloud agendas are also um, pushing themselves out to the edge, just in the same way the platforms are moving compute to the edge where it needs to be. The engineering teams are developing products and services in order to drive that experience that creates that, uh, that engagement uh, with their customers. So in other words, there is both a relationship northbound in the map between the engineering teams developing new products and services to get to the end user customer or the persona at the edge and those in IT are building platforms that are increasingly stretching out to start including data and digitization at the edge as well. And of course, we're helping customers to be able to move towards that hybrid cloud landscape. Of course, very excited about some of the announcements we made this week, not just around our own private cloud enterprise offering. Of course, we're working with customers like Asante to deliver those outcomes, but really compelling to see us now moving that offering into some of our colo partners like Equinix to be able to make sure you can provision that experience on demand as well. There is, however, a piece of glue that connects both of these uh, sides of this framework. So the two agendas at the edge around experience and digitization, along with the two agendas in the cloud around platforms and engineering, they are bound together through the conversation around data. Data becomes that common glue which connects the outcomes you're trying to drive at the edge and the way that you're both processing and gaining insight from it in the cloud. Data has become that essential kind of lifeblood that connects across the organization. In fact, I'd argue that customers now are moving AI and machine learning into mainstream because in many ways, the outcomes they're driving are increasingly digital outcomes and the productivity and revenue is increasingly reliant on technology to be able to be enabled. And so being able to mine that data for intelligence, because if I can mine it for intelligence, I can more quickly iterate and drive continuous innovation. And so things like high performance computing and democratizing that kind of access to specialized computes become an extremely important conversation with customers. Like any over in Italy, one of the oil and gas providers there using high performance compute to be able to better research um, seismic needs. However, when I speak to customers about data, again, that tends to fall into two key categories. Yes, there's a specialist focus around how to get insights from that data, and we would call that the intelligence agenda. So data is good, but insights are what enables me to be able to differentiate my offering. Quite different from what we would describe as the trust agenda, and tempting sometimes to think of that as just security. Actually, I think it's the reason we picked the word trust is because talking to customers, it turns out it's way more than just a, a security discussion. It's a discussion about 
beyond just resiliency and disaster recovery and fault tolerance. It is, it's actually a discussion about whether you as an organization can be trusted uh, with that data. And so it strays into areas like ethical behaviors. Are you transparent about the way you develop AI models on the data that you hold? And can you as an organization be trusted with that data? One of the reasons HBE published our own five principles for ethical AI development is in many ways it contributes to that trust agenda as we put uh, our uh, AI modeling to good use in the industry. So these two core ingredients that sit right in the middle of the framework, again, are often driven by, by different personas inside the customers that we speak to. And then you might have noticed there's a missing ingredient right in the middle of the model. And that missing ingredient turns out to be what we would describe as the operating model of the organization. And if I'm being honest, if you look at digital transformation discussions or cloud journeys, there's lots of statistics about why they fail or, or, be, or how they get stalled in their execution. And if you pick that apart and ask customers why, the reason is the technology is not the hard piece. Actually, the hard piece is evolving the operating model in a way that takes advantage of that technology or that new service delivery paradigm. In fact, focusing on the people transformation that's involved in shifting towards digital outcomes and being cloud enabled is by far the hardest thing to tackle. Unpicking the processes that have bound an organization together for decades and re-engineering them to be either digital engagement models or delivered off cloud service delivery platforms is by far the hardest part of this framework. So hopefully you can begin to see that within the conversations we've had, the edge, cloud, data, and security discussions as labels from HPE inside our customer accounts translates to very meaningful outcome-driven agendas. A couple of things I want to say about the map in its full glory is where you get the organizations, our customers, connecting those two edge agendas together, they tend to accelerate their outcomes or the value they're pursuing. So in other words, delivering an experience to a fan in a stadium, taking both the fan experience together along with the context of the, of the location, a digitized stadium, means you can start offering really enhanced differentiated outcomes. A patient in a hospital, a shopper in a retail experience, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, the, so connecting these two agendas together at the edge tends to drive compound benefit way beyond just the potential locked in the agenda itself. That is also extremely true of the two cloud agendas on the right. Where you see customers connecting together both the IT organization that's driving the platform's agenda together with the engineering organization that's leveraging those cloud platforms to deliver new products and services, you get compound benefit because you get the alignment across that hybrid cloud design. Where those two agendas separate, then often you'll have an IT organization which isn't connected with what the software engineering teams are doing. And you might describe that as shadow IT or, or black ops IT arising inside the organization. So what's been extremely important for us to learn is how to bring multiple personas and stakeholders together around these common agendas so that they can all uh, have clear line of sight of how they intend to connect value across the organization. You'll notice that we designed the map as um, essentially a Venn diagram. In other words, what we're saying is it doesn't matter if you're driving an experience agenda, let's say you're the chief sales officer, a digitization agenda, let's say you're head of manufacturing, a platforms agenda if you're IT, an engineering agenda if you're head of applications. All of these agendas are happening simultaneously inside our customer accounts. The only difficulty is whether or not those simultaneous agendas are happening in an orchestrated way. Are they connected together? Do they all, are they all working to a common base? And where they are, the, then the difficulty becomes they'll all exert pressure into those foundational agendas in the middle. Each agenda needs to drive insights and intelligence from their data set. Each agenda needs to affect and shape the way the organization operates. Each agenda needs to be trusted with that data and actually might have different regulatory controls around their data set. 
And so if you're someone that is organizing around insights, maybe the chief data officer, chief operating officer, security officer, your world has suddenly become extremely complex because now you're dealing with line of business trying to drive value at the edge, as well as IT and application development and engineering teams trying to drive the evolution of the cloud model as well. So hopefully this construct is something that resonates with you. It's a better, I think, description of what we mean by edge, data, cloud, security. And hopefully it's something that puts it into the context of how you as an organization can begin to drive change. Quick tip from me on how to use the map inside your own organization. If you're beginning to set up a new digital initiative, Let's say you're looking to shift some of your business revenue onto digital channels. Extremely popular initiative during the pandemic, as you can imagine, because the reliance on face-to-face -face, uh, meetings for income had to shift very rapidly onto online experiences and digital experiences. The way to use the map is to ask the questions embedded in each of the adjacent agendas. So if you want to shift towards digital engagement at the edge, does the physical location play a part in driving that experience? If you were to digitize or instrument the physical world, could it create something uniquely yours in the way you drive that experience? As you push into the middle, what am I going to do with the data set that I am generating in that experience? And how can I exploit it for, again, for unique insights and differentiation? How? Will I affect the operating model? If I suddenly move 20% of my revenue and engagement onto digital, is my organization set up to support that new experience at the edge? How do I secure that data? Who has access to the data that I'm now driving on the digital platform? What does it mean from a trust perspective? From a platform's perspective, what are the back-end core systems that now might need to scale up as I shift towards digital revenue. For most of the online retailers that saw a sudden spike in the pandemic as they shifted to online retail, the biggest constraint wasn't the online experience at the front end. It was all of the back end transactional processes that were overwhelmed because they weren't scaled up to meet that sudden rise in demand. So hopefully the map gives you an idea of how we can drive outcomes with the customers. But I started off by saying increasingly we're seeing sustainability and sustainable IT initiatives as being core to the way customers make decisions. In fact, we would describe these as guiding principles that inform the way customers lay those guardrails down inside their organization. So as they make decisions across the map, they're asking questions around, how can I make sure what I acquire is, dry, is being driven in a sustainable way? Not just what I consume, but also those new digital products and services I put out into the edge. How can I make sure they only consume the, 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 the energy that they need? And then there's another um, compelling guiding principle that sits in the middle of this, which is around data sovereignty. I don't know if you guys run into the data sovereignty issue, but where you place data matters in Europe. I'm from the UK, but in Europe, data sovereignty becomes a key part of the discussion. Where you place data matters and how you move it between countries matters. And your ability to act autonomously in that future state matters. So these kind of guiding principles sit behind that framework and help inform the way that we drive outcomes with customers. So the questions to ask yourself, if you want to use the map inside your own organization, the experience agenda, who's your beneficiary persona, and how is that digital experience going to drive outcomes? Can you describe those outcomes? Those kind of day in the life scenarios that you build when you design or ideate new experiences. Can the physical world be connected in order to help you create differentiation in that experience? A delegate here on the floor of Discover is different to an online delegate we did during the pandemic era a couple of years ago. How will you turn those digital interactions into insights, starting to leverage AI and machine learning in mainstream? How will you secure that edge to cloud experience? Does your engineering team have unified access to the data set, both from the digital world as well as that digital experience? And what are the platforms that you're going to need to scale up in order to be able to deliver that digitized experience? And then the last thing, of course, is how will that operating model adjust 
as you look to drive those new experiences online. So if you want to take the next steps, there's lots of session IDs that you can come to. I'm standing over on booth 903, and we can get into a little bit more detail behind the map. Uh, there's demos as well, 905, 911. Um, and please take the time to follow us on Twitter as well. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for taking 20 minutes out of your diary here at Discover Vegas. And I look forward to speaking to you all over at booth 903.